So welcome everybody and uh, thanks for joining. Today I will speak about uh, the role of a class of transcription factor of a nuclear receptor in uh, supporting the maintenance of pluripotency in mouse embryonic stem cells. So here cells, just as a reminder, are cells that are derived from the epiblast of pre-implantation embryo. And like epiblast cell really maintain the ability to differentiate into all cells that constitute uh, the adult uh, body, a trait that is defined pluripotency. And this ability is maintained indefinitely in your cells in culture. And this was uh, classically achieved by keeping the cells in a medium, including FCS and the cytokine leaf, which resulted in a metastable state in which the cells showed a certain uh, propensity to differentiate. More recently, uh, uh, more uh, robust culture conditions have been uh, defined that are based on the activation of wind signaling and the blockade of uh, pro-differentiation uh, signals. So this, uh, the ability of ESLs uh, to differentiate into different cell types is maintained by the activity of a very well characterized network of transcription factor that really is founded on the function of two co-regulators, OC4 and SOX2. And along aside this transcription factor operate a number of uh, other transcription factors whose function really is considered auxiliary. And among these, uh, my work and uh, that of many other groups really identified ESRB as a key player. SRB is important to integrate external signals, is our expression drives uh, leaf independence in ESLs, and, and um, uh, this factor is also an important uh, mediator through which wind signaling inputs into and supports the activity of the pluripotency network. SRB also controls several key defining feature, molecular feature of prepotency. It's able to interact with uh, co-activators, mediator, and therefore the transcription of machinery and uh, recruit uh, this machinery at an answer, defining those extended uh, regulatory regions that are a key feature of uh, the prepotency uh, network. Uh, we have shown that ESRB can remain bound to regulatory region during cell division. And this might be a way through which this factor ensure the stability of the pluripotency network uh, during the proliferation of ESLs. Instead, conversely, when ESRB uh, is uh, downregulated, ESLs irreversibly commit the differentiation. So given all this important uh, molecular function, it's surprising that while in uh, conventional culture condition, the uh, uh, knockout of ESRB triggers the differentiation of ESLs, the knockout of this gene is in fact tolerated in culture condition the more robustly support a pluripotency. So ESRB in itself is not strictly required for the maintenance of pluripotency in ESLs. So uh, this apparent contradiction within the importance of the molecular function performed by ESRB and the effect of uh, the knockout might be reconciled by considering that ESRB is part of a broader family of uh, orphan nuclear receptors and, and that are structurally related and might be performing an overlapping role. And in this sense, one obvious candidate is nr 5 2 both genes present a very similar extension to the canonical uh, zinc finger DNA binding domain of nuclear receptors that allow them uh, to uh, bind independently of ligands and as monomer to nearly identical sequences on uh, DNA. On top of that, as SRB, nr 5 2 has been previously uh, shown to act as a pluripotency regulator. So could it be that the redundance function of uh, nr 5 2 and ESRB has so far masked their importance to maintain a pluripotency? So to address this problem, we started by verifying that the two transcription factors would occupy and act at the same set of regulatory regions. And this is indeed the case with ESRB occupying a higher number of uh, uh, regulatory regions than nf 2 which is due to the higher expression of ESRB in ESLs. In FCS and LEAF and 2 and LEAF, these two factors uh, occupy an overlapping set of regions, but uh, this number is greater in 2 and LEAF. Again, this is probably due to the fact that the expression of the two, these two transcription factors is uh, more robust in uh, 2 and LEAF. The position that don't show or are not called as bound as one of the two uh, factors then uh, show uh, uh, nonetheless, some residual binding of, of the other partner, and therefore we believe that these two uh, transcription factors really target a highly overlapping set of regulatory uh, regions in, in the genome. Yet they display some specificity in binding. And while we're trying to understand how this specificity in a recruitment uh, could be uh, mediated, we realized uh, that uh, the uh, binding motif for SRB and NFV2 really present only one base that shows uh, some variability. And retrospective analysis of our binding data 
allow us to determine that indeed is this based that bind preferential recruitment with an alpha 2 preferring to bind to regions including motif that have a C at the seven position while ESRB displaying a more robust binding to uh, regions including a T. So they find that with some specificity, these two factor target uh, as a core a shared set of regulatory elements, we moved on to understand whether indeed we could find signs of a direct uh, uh, redundancy in function between uh, these uh, two factors. And we did so by deleting uh, both genes in ESLs, starting from cells in which both ESRB alleles are deleted uh, by homologous recombination, and in which ESRB expression is rescued uh, with a doxycycline inducible transgene. And we further deleted ENR5A2 in this setting. So as we said in the, in the introduction, the deletion of ESRB uh, uh, compromises the self-renewal of ESLs in FCS and LIF, with ener 5 2 in this context only showing a modest additive effects. And also, as mentioned at the beginning, uh, the deletion of ESRB into ILIF is instead tolerated, even if uh, slightly detrimental. And um, most importantly, in this condition, instead, the deletion, the further deletion of nr 5 2 really completely compromises the ability of ESLs to serve you. This is a specific effect because it, they can be rescued by repairing uh, one of uh, the disrupted nr 5 2 alleles and are likely determined by the downregulation of a wide panel of uh, pluripotency F uh, genes that occurs uh, just two days after triggering a deletion of, of these uh, two transcription factors. Again, as in the clonal assay, ESRB function is prominent in FCS2 leaf, in FCS leaf, sorry, and is only in 2 I leaf. Uh, that the uh, molecular redundancy and uh, the functional redundancy, sorry, between uh, these two transcription factors become apparent and uh, functionally uh, really relevant. Overall, we uh, identified 3,000 genes that respond uh, to the deletion of this factor in ESLs. And really, what I want to focus on here is uh, uh, on the fact that the transcriptional response that we observe uh, in the double uh, knockout uh, for these factors not only includes, but vastly exceeds uh, the uh, uh, response that we see in single knockouts. Moreover, the genes that are differentially expressed only in a response to deletion of one of the two factors, then nonetheless show a milder, but uh, still concordant change in expression in uh, the uh, respective uh, knockout. So overall, I think these uh, results establish the fact that ESRB and nr 5 2 act uh, redundantly and in a concordant way uh, to regulate gene expression in ESLs. We observe overall uh, 1,500 genes that are regulated and a similar number of upregulated genes. The downregulated genes, as we said, are more associated with gene ontology terms related to prepotency, whereas possibly not surprising, uh, upregulated genes are more related to processes as uh, cell differentiation and developmental uh, progression. Specifically, on top of a complex effect on the upregulation of specific markers of the post-implantation of prime prepotent state that we can discuss later possibly, we observe the upregulation up of a full panel of uh, genes that are expressed in the three embryonic uh, germ lineages and in uh, extra embryonic uh, tissues. So overall, this really shows that uh, in response to uh, ESRB and alpha 2 deletion, the cells undergo multilineage differentiation. So to understand how this uh, could be uh, uh, achieved or mediated, sorry, we decided to study how the, uh, the function of ESRB and alpha 2 would influence the binding and the function of other pluripotency regulators and we're able to show that ESRB and nr 5 2 occupy almost the two-thirds of the regions that are also co-bound by OCT4, SOX2, and ANOC. And most importantly, the deletion of ESRB and nr 5 2 really compromises the binding of these other transcription factors at these common regions in as little as two days. So Again, here you can notice that the response to the deletion of both transcription factor vastly exceeds in magnitude that of the single knockouts. To better understand these uh, dependencies in binding, we uh, perform uh, a supervised clustering with a uh, turnout uh, uh, to identify five regions uh, that make uh, functional sense. Uh, we identified an answer that are dependent on the booked factor and of course on the deletion of uh, ESRB and nr 5 2 together. 
uh, classes of enhancers that are more dependent on ESRB or vice versa, NR5A2, and then a prominent group of regulatory regions that instead responds only when both factors are uh, knocked out uh, together. And these include many of uh, the important pluripotency enhancers. So overall, I think we established that ESRB and NR5A2 really operate conjunctly to support the activity of the pluripotency network and do so in a clearly additive and coherent way. But can we really show uh, some evidence of molecular cooperativity between these two transcription factors? So to do so, we focused on regions that display only one binding site for ESRB or NF52. And this is not the norm because normally ESRB and NF52 are uh, driven to bind uh, regions that display multiple uh, of their binding sites. Nonetheless, keeping this in mind, uh, this analysis reveals that ESRB and nr 5 2 are able to access an identical uh, position in the genome and do so largely independently, yet they favor each other binding, as you see here and here. And this is a clear say, sign of uh, cooperativity between transcription factors. Most importantly, binding to this very same position on the genome, ESRB and nr 5 2 control binding of other key regulators, and do so with specificity. You can compare here the response of different classes of enhancers and do so in a clearly synergistic way. So overall, I think our work identified ESRB and NFRB2 as a new class of essential regulators of prepotency. What's important might be uh, paralleling that of OCT4 and SOX2 in embryonic stem cells. And now we are curious to see, uh, uh, since these transcription factors are expressed throughout pre-implantation development and in germ cells, what would be the developmental effect of uh, knocking out both genes in the embryos. I want to stop here and uh, just thank uh, the people that contributed to the work, uh, to this work that I started in London and completing, uh, completed uh, in the lab of Pablo Navarro at the Institute Pasteur, pointing out that Almira did a statistical analysis of the data, and yes, really helped with cell culture, and Nick Owens now working at Exeter, really uh, led the uh, computational analysis of the data. I stop here and I will be happy to take uh, your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nicola, for this really interesting, fascinating story. Um, please post your questions in the Q&A box. So I'll start off with one question. I was wondering how you speculate the, the control of the OC4 SOX2 nanog binding is achieved by ESR, RB, and NR5A2. So for what reason are they lost at their binding sites when you knock out these two factors? Is it due to just down regulation of expression of the OSN or accessibility? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, I don't have the data here, but in the in the per print we have posted on the barca, we show that uh, the protein level of OCT4, SOX2, and ANOG are not uh, massively altered uh, at uh, the time points we are analyzing in this case. I want to remind that here we are looking at two days after uh, starting depleting these factors uh, by withdrawing docs, which take a full day to really uh, deplete ESRB. So the very, very early consequences of, of losing these factors. Uh, regarding the mechanisms, there, there are uh, several ways. Uh, uh, we don't have a definite proof of how this could work. And it might be that in different regions, there is different mechanisms. But we know, for example, that uh, ESRB is able to uh, um, interact with chromatin remodels. And uh, as been shown, then especially during the reprogramming process, ESRB is particularly good at instating accessibility at the regions it binds. Uh, so I assume that in regions that present strong binding sites for ESRB and alpha 2 and instead possibly weaker uh, direct recruitment of other factors, the fact that ESRB and alpha 2 create a, a, a nucleosome-free environment uh, and an accessibility, increases accessibility of the region, probably drives uh, the binding of other factors, vice versa. When you deplete these two factors, probably you lose this accessibility and, uh, and therefore the binding of other factors. Of course, uh, these are not absolute effect and there will be other regions that are instead uh, equally bound uh, uh, or in which uh, the other factor, for example, of four and SOX2 are equally recruited by a direct recognition of their uh, binding sites on DNA and they might play the dominant uh, role there or an independent role because they are robust enough to uh, stand uh, by themselves when, when you lose uh, the additive effect of uh, the two nuclear receptors. 
Okay, thanks. We have actually quite a few questions, so I'll go straight on to the next one. Um, so Bernhard Payer is asking, is there any regulatory feedback? Do ESRB and NR582 also find their own, each other's promoters? So uh, expression-wise, they don't seem to depend exclusively uh, or a lot on each other. We don't see a, a, a strong downregulation of the respective transcripts in, uh, in the in the in the knockout lines, minding that these are lines that have uh, those alleles a bit uh, uh, altered because uh, there are knockout lines. Uh, at, the, at the protein level, probably there will be over on longer time frames a sort of a response in which if you knock out ESRB, you also lose a bit nr 5 2 and vice versa. But I don't think this is the principal uh, way they do influence each other activity now. Thanks. So we have a question from Sally Lowell. Do you think this loss of binding SOX2, et cetera, is a downstream consequence of the pro-differentiation phenotype of the and deletion, or an upstream cause of that phenotype, so cause or consequence? I think I replied a bit uh, before. I think the fact that we observe very early uh, stages in the, in the or very early times after depleting the factor would suggest that these are direct effect, and therefore, I would argue that this is a cause, and also the differential uh, the differential effect that we see at different classes of enhancers uh, uh, goes in in this direction. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We have a question from Marilena about the developmental. Regarding your last comment on expression pattern, would you expect that the degree of the cooperativity and even cooperativity itself would change in e.g. germ cells and early embryonic cells? Uh, change based on the fact that different uh, transcription factor might be part of the network, but the, the network are, are not identical, but uh, pretty similar. So I would uh, expect uh, the two uh, transcription factor to play uh, a similarly overlapping role uh, in, in, uh, in germ cells. Where this uh, is the absolute uh, case, uh, I don't know. Uh, for example, in both system, they could be important to mediate uh, the effect or be one of uh, the classes of factors that mediates the effect of uh, activating wind signaling. And I think this, uh, there's good reason to uh, think that this is important in ESLs and also uh, conserved in, uh, in during the induction of, of germ cells. It's difficult to know until we really do the experiment, at least uh, possibly models in which we, we model the appearance of germ cells in vitro. And this is something we are, we are going to do. Mm. Are both the factors expressed uh, institutively during development? Is that what you mentioned? No, uh, but we know and uh, we have analyzed this uh, by creating, uh, with uh, in collaboration with other people in, in the group, uh, Michelle Cohen and, and uh, the people that work with him, uh, Anna Geiselman and, and Sandrin. Uh, we have uh, we have really tried to uh, dissect which is the pattern of expression of these two genes, at least during pre-implantation development. And we know that uh, the uh, transcripts are uh, maternally inherited from uh, for both genes. And uh, as far as we can tell so far, the proteins start to appear uh, around uh, the late two cell stage where you have uh, the activation of expression from the zygotic genome. And then they remain expressed just uh, until uh, implantation. Uh, where both genes quickly uh, are quickly downregulated at the transcript and protein levels, uh, so they are not expressed in the post-implantation epiblast, and will they will pick up expression again around a 7.5 uh, in early early uh, PGCs. So just to follow up quickly, are they uh, at least at the transcript levels? Are they preferentially expressed in the ICM? Do you know? In the yes, yes, uh, in. Uh, it takes a, a bit of time before they really, they are not expressed in trophectoderm, that's for sure, but the distinction between a, a primitive endoderm and a, a epiblast is a bit slower to appear. Okay, thanks. And we have one last question um, from Saham Barajwar. Sorry for my pronunciation. I have a naive question and I may have missed it in the presentation, but how do you maintain the ESRB knockout ESLs in undifferentiated state if they differentiate in the presence of 2R? Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, possibly I've been a bit fast in the presentation. We have cells uh, that do not, let's say in the double knockouts, we have cells that do not have endogenous ESRB or nr 5 2 but we have a transgene that we can induce with DOCs that maintains ESRB levels in the cells. So having ESRB is enough. 
and, and this is how we maintain the cells. When we withdraw docs, and these are the figures that you saw, we basically mimic the effect of losing ESRB in a condition where you don't have an alphabet. Uh, 